Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel, otherwise known as Politics for Plebeians. I have a Canada Day message for you. And before I use the word Canada Day again, because that is the common usage today, mostly because of the Liberal Party of Canada, let me use the correct name for Friday's celebration. It is indeed Dominion Day. I wrote the following this morning after driving past Parliament. I drove past Parliament today as I came up Sussex and turned right onto Wellington to the hill. Police were everywhere in preparation for the freedom protest which will take place on Canada Day. The official name of our country is the Dominion of Canada, and therefore the day to me will always be Dominion Day. This is the name which celebrates our autonomy from Great Britain as an emergent nation. After all, no child should forget their parent nor ignore their relationship to them even when they become an autonomous adult exercising their own judgment and freely making their own choices. The scriptures warn us about the hubris of the child who dishonors their parents and the fate that dishonor will bring upon the offspring. So when I drove past Parliament and its magnificent buildings, I was struck with an overwhelming realization that the inhabitants of those august and beautiful buildings have become like hermit crabs. The outside appearance of the hill remains little changed, but those who inhabit those buildings have completely rejected the system of governance that served to create the government of the Dominion of Canada. Many, many tackle parson might as well be written above the doors of its main entrance. Here is what these words mean. Many, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Paris, the kingdom is divided. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. I find, you know, the warnings of the scriptures so timely because they are eternally true in the metaphorical sense. The Bible is not a scientific document. It is a metaphorical document based upon great parables that are truer than true if they were scientifically accurate. Now, undoubtedly, Daniel did live and made this prophecy, but that's not my point. This government has been weighed in the scales and found wanting repeatedly. From Brian Lilly in the Toronto Sun, Tamara Lynch nabbed for breach of bail while repeated violent offenders use revolving door of court system. And I provide the link for that article. It'll be in the notes below my video. Without downplaying the impact of the Freedom Convoy, on residents of Ottawa's downtown core, those are hardly charges that would normally see this kind of action by police and prosecutors. Litch has no prior criminal record and has not been convicted of the charges she now faces, stated Brian Lilly. End of quote there. Of course not, because Miss Lynch is a political prisoner in jail purely due to her having the unmitigated gall to believe that the Dominion of Canada is a free country governed by the rule of law. Our neo-totalitarian cadre of hermit crabs fear what will take place this Dominion Day here in Ottawa. Hence the police presence I mentioned earlier. James Topp will arrive in Ottawa this Friday after marching on foot from Vancouver. Here is why he is marching and who he is if you have not heard of him and his incredible journey from our left coast, 
and I do mean left, as in left-leaning. James Topp is a serving soldier who has served in the Canadian Armed Forces for 28 years. James is in the process of being released and as such is a unique case of a current serving member engaging in peaceful protest openly. The Canada Marches team and Canadians have come to know James as a man with great humility, integrity, drive, leadership and a desire to serve. Canada is getting to know him as well along the road. James is keen to protect his mindful integrity by questioning the orders he is given, he is being given. He believes in and talks about rising above the classification of thought. He is keen to avoid identity politics, take talking in circles about how we got here and what and wants to implore solutions. I'm sure that, that this article meant to say explore solutions as well as open dialogue. He has often heard he is often heard saying some version of, can't we all just have respect and compassion for each other and call it a day? So why is James marching? Number one, James is protesting the federal government mandate that require as a condition for employment or continued employment, vaccination, testing, quarantine, and or isolation. Number two, James has stepped forward to speak on behalf of those personnel employed by the federal government or otherwise who have been denied access to employment and services, who have lost income and have suffered from damaged relationships due to the imposition of a medical procedure. Three, James has stepped forward to speak on behalf of those who have, through the inter Introduction of false constructs surrounding choices and consequences been pressured into taking part into medical in medical procedures that they would not otherwise have accepted. His mission statement, we rise to serve Canadians with honesty, respect and compassion for the purpose of reuniting our people. We do this with the intention of ensuring our government upholds the laws that support Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms. End of quote there, and that's from James' own website. And my final <laughs> paragraph is my word to all of Canada on this up-and-coming Dominion Day. I both salute and honour Tamara and James, but what disgusts me is that a nation founded on the rule of law and limited constitutional government with the separation of powers between the executive, legislative, and judiciary has permitted the floor of parliament and our sacred institutions such as our courts to become inhabited by creatures who desecrate their offices. These elitists have no respect for our heritage and simply refuse to defend our sacred rights under proper and transparent parliamentary oversight. Our nation, as an experiment in peace, order, and good government, has failed under the mishandling by the filthy claws of a pack of hermit crabs who exist in mere pretense to what their high office has called them to be. And worse, we have placed them there. It is time to place them all in a crab bucket where they can be boiled, cracked, and consumed with garlic butter so at least they will serve some purpose if only to satiate the nation's appetite for shellfish. We must create legislation which will allow us to hold such treasonous oligarchs responsible so that we, we, we may recall them for their malfeasance and corruption for which they have so often proven themselves to be guilty. I'm so angry I could spit. So rather than <laughs> inflict my negative emotions on you, I invite you to think and pray about this because everything that I've stated is demonstrably true. I invite you to discuss these things with me. Have a debate with me because I can prove everything that I have asserted and I can prove it over and over and over again 
based on what this corrupt class of leadership that we have placed in positions of responsibility have done to the fair dominion of Canada. God bless you all. And if possible, happy Dominion Day. <laughs>